So, um, a couple weeks ago, I was at, I know, well, I was at St. John's doing a wedding, and I do have this habit of eavesdropping into other people's conversations, so just fair warning. Um, and this 18-year-old kid who had graduated was talking to this middle-aged woman, and he said that he, he's going to Gonzaga, going to study at Gonzaga, and she says, oh, that's great. And he says, it's kind of shocking, he says, well, there's really only one professor who's any good. So the middle-aged woman says, "Um, you know, some of those other professors, they may be, they may have something to teach you, which I just loved her gentleness. Like the only thing he's achieved is a high school diploma, and already he thinks he's smarter than every professor except for one. But I love how gentle she was, uh, because I always have a little bit of vinegar to me, because I probably would have said something more cruel. Um, But, wow, at 18, he already knows, he thinks he knows more than his professors. So I just bring that up, because um, in today's gospel, Jesus says that um, the ways of the learned and wise, that's hidden from God. So that's a bizarre thing to say. Is Jesus saying that he's anti-wisdom or anti-knowledge? No, he's not. Uh, He's not against knowledge. He's against those who think that they're know-it-alls. Like the 18-year-old kid who thinks he knows everything. Uh, If you have that much arrogance and pride, it actually makes you dumber. Pride makes you dumb, and you don't even know it. So when he says the learned and the wise, he's being sarcastic against certain religious leaders who think they know more than everyone else. And if you think about it, like in the Gospel of Matthew, the Pharisees and the priests, they don't like Jesus. Um, they, They know the Bible really well, but they're so arrogant that they can't even be taught by God because they know everything. They're worse than the 18 year old kid. And the paradox is, the more they practice religion, the farther they get away from God, because their pride has ruined everything. Um, So he's not anti-knowledge, he's anti-pride. He's anti those who think that they're so much smarter than everybody else. And what the gospel and the first reading are advocating is the power of humility. And with humility, you can learn. Or another story. There's this guy I know. uh, He is brilliant, like just super brilliant. And he tells a story about when he was growing up, um, his family wasn't religious. But and to be honest, he grew up in Portland. um, And in junior high, his grades were horrible. They were like basically a C. And he was really hanging around with skateboarders and potheads. So he falls in to this, uh, one of his friends is going to um, uh, religious ed for junior high kids. And he's going, and he likes it. He likes it so much, he really starts going a lot, likes the youth minister who's there. And the youth minister one day tells him, he says, you know, you're wasting your potentiality. You, know, you have a lot of great talent, and you waste it hanging around some of these other guys that are, are just going to be potheads. You know, why don't, you have a chance to make something great of your, your life. And he really did like the youth minister. And he st- started to think about it because once he started to kind of go to these meetings and study religion, he loved it. And if you're getting a religious education, you also get introduced to some history. And he loved history. He loved reading C.S. Lewis. Um, and lo and behold, he gets so turned on by it, he actually... Uh, uh, in now he has a PhD, and he's a linguist as well in history and uh, multiple languages. He has a PhD, and a while back this woman, uh, he's younger, just young kids, but he is super brilliant. But one of his family friends found out that he's very active in his church, and she had known him for years, so she invites him to coffee. And, they're from Portland, and she says to him, says, well, I found out that you're, you know, super religious in your church. And she says, I find that very disturbing because religious people tend to be closed-minded. 
And he said, no. He said, that, that's not true. I was closed-minded before religion. But religion introduced me to history and thought. He said, religion is what opened my mind. Now, just between you and I, like, who there is closed-minded? <laughs> uh, but he's right. Like, the humility that he recognized hanging around those people is not going to help. Religion is actually what made him open-minded. And he's this incredibly humble guy that just he wants to learn everything about life. Humility and faith, that leads to real wisdom and knowledge. Pride just makes you dumber. And so in the, um, in the gospel, Jesus is advocating humility. Or in the first reading, the prophecy about the Christ is the Christ will be the humble one. And here's the key point for us, because it's, uh, it's from Zechariah, and it has all these prophecies. And I just, I'm amazed at all the prophecies. Like, when the Christ will come, he'll, as the first reading said, come on a colt, which means humility. Uh, the prideful will have trouble recognizing the Christ. In fact, the prideful will try and kill the Christ. They're, they'll tear holes in his hand. The prideful won't be able to recognize Christ. The humble, they'll be able to recognize the presence of God. I love that, that the prophecy is that the Christ will be humble, and the humble will be able to recognize him. And so um, the readings are about humility. It's humility that really opens up our minds and our hearts so that we can recognize Christ and we can learn. And the main thing we want to learn is actually love. The, the Pharisees, uh, they really don't love well. The Pharisees advocate 613 laws that you have to obey. And that, those 613, that was called the yoke. So when Jesus says, take my yoke upon ye, he's being different than the the Pharisees. The Pharisees would say, you need to obey all 613, which, by the way, is impossible. And it's especially impossible if you're a farmer or you're a rancher. That's why the Pharisees hated the shepherds, because they couldn't keep all the laws. So when Jesus says, take my yoke upon ye, his yoke is his law, and the law is one. His law is love. Self-sacrificing, unselfish love is the yoke. Um, the yoke is like something we hold, uh, like an oxen, it wears a yoke. Uh, the law is what we're binding ourselves to. The humble, they can learn how to love. The arrogant, like the Pharisees, they're too prideful. They really won't love. And I love this passage about the yoke, take my yoke upon me. Because Catholics have this tradition about the yoke. Um, it's called a scapular. A scapular is, um, if you ever see any monks, monks will have this uh, thin piece of cloth that goes over their front and over their back. And it symbolizes the yoke, this oxen yoke. But it's actually the law of love. And so lay people and priests, um, I got it tangled up. Um, if you've never seen it, it's called a scapular. And it goes over you. I... I love wearing the scapular, but the scapular is this idea of uh, humility and love, that you have yoked yourself to the law of love. And if it's yoked, you have to be humble so that you can love more and more and more and more. I, I'm kind of crazy. I really only have two pieces of jewelry, um, my tau cross and my scapular. Um, but I absolutely love waking up in the morning um, well, after the shower, and um, putting on my scapular and saying a prayer, the Shema, that I can love with all my heart, mind, and soul, that's the yoke that we're committing ourselves to. And when Christ says, take my yoke upon me and you will find rest, when he says rest, it means like Sabbath rest, which is freedom. Uh, you take the yoke of lo love upon yourself, you be humble of heart, and you'll find freedom. Freedom from arrogance and pride, and you can truly learn from God. Um, now, this sounds kind of strange, but you think, well, if you're very religious and you know a lot of rules, then 
that makes you more religious. No, religion plus pride is not only makes you dumber, it's also dangerous. Um, and just like a little story. So I know this woman, um, she works for the bishop and she's in charge of liturgy. And she doesn't have a degree in liturgy. Uh, actually, very, very few people do. But she's wicked smart. Like, she is sharp. She reads everything. She has a degree in literature. Uh, she's read everything. It's amazing how much she knows, especially in the area of liturgy. She reads everything. And she's very gentle. But um, this one newly ordained priest, whenever he meets her, um, he always has to remind her that he's a priest and she's just a lay person. Even though technically, um, well, that's true, but honestly, she's a lot more smarter than he is. In fact, there's this other priest who um, lives in the East Coast who is uh, this PhD in canon law and a PhD in liturgy. He really is smart, and he's coming out with this new book. And you always have somebody edit the book for you. Well, he's asked this woman here in Idaho to edit because she is really brilliant, like the older priest, who's really smart, can recognize she is brilliant. The newly ordained priest, who really is not a bad person, but he's still filled with a lot of pride. He can't see the, how brilliant somebody is before him because he's so wrapped up in pride. So if you're wondering, well, what's the point of your homily? It's really easy. Pride makes you dumber. Humility gives you an open heart where you can really love other people. And then you can learn the yoke of Christ. The yoke of Christ promises us freedom, free from ego and pride, so we really can love each other. And so together, let us stand and profess our faith.